guys, in this video we're going to look at the practicality of reading and writing rhythm. The following passage is a simple rhythm which looks difficult because of the way it has been written. I'm going to provide you with four rules that will allow you to write easily readable and theoretically correct rhythms. Once we have worked through these rules, we will return to the passage that you have just seen and use these rules to make it considerably easier to read. Our first rule is called the quaver beaming rule. This is a single quaver, which is worth half a beat. If I were to fill a whole bar of 2-4, 3-4 or 4-4 with these quavers, the multitude of little tails can become overwhelming. It also becomes difficult for us to see where each new beat starts, as each of these notes is worth a fraction of a beat. In order to make quavers easier to read, we beam them together instead of writing each quaver with its own tail. In our 2-4 and 3-4 bars, we can beam all of the quavers together. If we were to beam all of the quavers of a 4-4 bar together, we would have eight notes joined together, and this becomes too much for us to process. Instead, we beam the first four quavers and the last four quavers together. Rule two tells us that we should write as few rests as possible. If I wanted to have two beats of silence, I should use a minimum rest not two crotchet rests or four quaver rests. Writing more rests than necessary makes our music look complicated and makes us work harder than we need to by identifying and counting a multitude of symbols when one would do. The third rule is called the 4-4 split rule. A 4-4 bar is the longest bar of music we will encounter at this point in our music studies and in order to make music easier to read in this time signature, we split our bar in half. As we saw with the quavers in rule 1, we need to beam the first two beats of the bar together and the last two beats of the bar together. Similarly, if I wanted to have a note on the first and last beats of my 4-4 bar and silence in between, I would have to write two crotchet rests instead of one minimum rest. Rule four tells us to always complete our beat. If I were to write a single quaver in a two-four bar, I would be left with one and a half beats of rest. I would need to add a crotchet rest and a quaver to make sure that I had the correct number of beats in this bar. But now I have a problem because beat one starts on the quaver, which is fine, but beat two starts halfway through the crotchet rest. It would be much better to write the quaver rest first, completing beat one, and then write the crotchet rest for beat two. When adding rests to a bar, always ensure that you can circle each beat of the bar without cutting any rests in half. As you may have realized by now, a number of these rules contradict one another. Rule 2 says I should write as few rests as possible, but Rule 3 says I should have a divide down the middle of my 4-4 bar. A good rule of thumb is to follow the order of the rules. The higher the number of the rule, the more important it is. Therefore, we would write two crotchet rests here instead of a minimum because Rule 3 is higher and therefore more important than Rule 2, which says I should write as few rests as possible. Let's return to our original passage now and see if we can simplify it by following these rules. Our aim here is not to change the sound of the music, but to make it easier to read while maintaining the exact same sound as the original. If we look at the first bar, we can see that there is no divide down the middle. We would need to split the beam of these quavers in half so I can keep my imaginary line down the middle of the bar. There are also two quaver rests at the end of the bar. It would be much simpler to just write one crotchet rest. The second bar starts with five unbeamed quavers. Rule one tells us that we may beam the first four quavers in a 4-4 four -four bar together. I cannot beam the fifth quaver because I need to have a divide down the middle of my 4-4 four -four bar. The last half of the second bar is problematic because our quaver beat is incomplete. If we swap the quaver and crotchet rest, we can clearly see beats 3 and 4 of the bar. 
If we listen to the original and the new version of this passage at the same time, we will hear that they sound exactly the same, but the new version is considerably easier to read. These rules are printed in the online notes which accompany this lesson. This is quite a tricky section of work and takes quite a bit of practice to get right. Um, please read through the notes and work through the online exercises to consolidate this new skill. And please remember I'm always available to help you if you need any assistance.